G'day Ice Cream Lovers, my name's Steve Christensen, the Ice Cream Bloke and self-appointed headmaster at ScoopSchool.com and in today's video we're going to be building upon the first two videos that we had in this series. If you'll recall video number one we spoke about the end product. So whether you're doing self-serve frozen yogurt or gelato, uh, frozen custard or premium ice cream, it's important to use some of those principles to give your customer the best end product that you can. Second video we spoke a little bit about engagement, so how you and your employees can engage or enrich the customer service experience. In this video we're going to talk about the environment in which all of this takes place and it really can't be overlooked as one of the key principles in order to have a successful frozen dessert or ice cream shop. So let's get straight into it. Now there are challenges with different types of floor plans and different things but I wanted to show you a couple of examples of what really works in the ice cream business. This is a, a place called Cops Frozen Custard. They're based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And Mr. Cop has just got it down when it comes to the process of environment. Now, admittedly, he's the king of frozen custard up there, so he's got a lot, a lot of business. He does burgers, fries, and frozen custard, but I just want to touch on a couple of elements that really does make him or his business stand out amongst all those around him. This first location, and by, by the way, all of these locations are purpose-built. So this first location kind of looks like a Swiss chalet. Uh, the thing that you don't see on the right hand side here is this glassed in terrarium type eating area where even when it's dumping down and it's 30 degrees you can sit in a 72 degree environment with plants growing there and there's a really nice feeling there. The second location he has is this one here. Now a lot of people have said in the process of describing what this business looks like it looks like a, a public toilet or a library, a rest stop. So what type of sign would you put outside a store like this? Well, you'd probably put one of these big futuristic LED signs that goes through the process of educating the customer what the flavor is of the day and so forth. The thing that I want to draw your attention to is along the back parking lot, he has a row of 20 cows, 19 white, one black. And interestingly, there's a sign here that says, please don't climb on the cows. But every time I go up there, there's literally teams of children climbing all over these cows. And what really jumps to my mind in this process is that Carl Kopp understands that it's not just about the ice cream and it's not just about customer service. It's also about the environment in which you are providing these two services. So what he does is creates this environment where he engages his customers in the whimsical nature of ice cream and not just the taste of the, of the ice cream itself. His third location is out near the airport and again very different uh, architecturally than the others. You've got this large concrete wall here with an opening and as you walk into the left you go into the store. If you walk through that opening and down to the right you drop down into a sunken garden which has a full length waterfall that goes all the way along that eating area. Absolutely incredible. And so you've got people here who again love the ice cream, love the customer service, but they're sitting down into this eating area and having this waterfall uh, falling down before their eyes just really adds to the process of making this ice cream or trip to the ice cream shop just so unique. Now, this is probably very expensive and many of these national and international regional chains have the budget to put something together which can really wow their customers when it comes to the uh, the environment in which they are selling their product but you can take principles here and apply them to your own business for example this is the photograph of the store that we purchased in St. Louis Missouri now at the time it was an ice cream shop frozen custard shop it looked very tired paint peeling off, big holes in the parking lot. Inside it looked just as tired. So we had a lot of this glass brick area here, this kind of faux marble paintwork, a lot of mirrors. I'll tell you one thing too, here's a tip that you'll take away. If you don't remember anything else from this video, remember this. You never want to be able to have a customer stand up to the register here and look to the side and look at themselves in the mirror when they're ordering a banana split. Bad news. If it were up to me, I'd even take the mirrors out of the bathroom so they couldn't look at themselves. We don't want any self-esteem things happening in the ice cream shop. They can do that after they leave. In any case, um, a lot of mirrors. He had this fascination with fake trees. Fake trees at the top, fake trees along the side here. <clears throat> and all in all, the place just looked relatively tired. Now, in the process of transforming this business into the business that we wanted to grow, 
We didn't really spend a lot of money, but we looked at some key elements from other businesses to be able to create a great environment for our customers to uh, enjoy our ice cream. So the first thing we did was we took down the trees between the two buildings and we put together an eating area. Nothing is a magnet to people coming into an ice cream shop than seeing other people outside eating ice cream. Very, very important. So if you've got the ability to have an eating area, some benches, tables and so forth outside the store, very, very important. Uh, the second thing we did here was just brighten up the outside, a quick coat of paint, power wash the building. So that's the way the building looked when we were done. Now inside, we really didn't do too much. We actually painted uh, a lot of the, uh, the interior walls, took down the mirrors obviously. We took a grout line and basically just shaved off the counter. Again, it's so important to engage your customers and let them see the theater of ice cream. Previously, we had these big glass pillars up here and really couldn't see anything that was going on. So we shaved that off, put a low counter there, put some signs and logos around the place. Again, wanting to engage the customer visually so that we leave an imprint on their mind as to our business. Uh, bought a couple of cows from an online uh, cow warehouse, where else but in Texas. And so this is what we were looking at when we purchased the business. So this is the environment that our customers were used to coming into. And this is what we were providing them now. So what you've got here is just a splash of color, a little bit different design, cows up the top here which will really uh, jump out at them. Not literally, I should say, but the process of them walking into when they're used to uh, a very drab and plain looking store, to now they're coming in and looking at all of this color popping, TV on the wall, cows in the, in the mezzanine, really does make a great place for engagement. Uh, the process of serving your customers from a display case, again, just so very, very important. Another thing that we did do which uh, really benefited us financially was this a condiment rail which was at the back of the store. We actually rotated around and put it right in front of the customers so they could see what was going on. And interestingly, when customers were having a sundae or a concrete or a blizzard made up for them, uh, they would often look at some of these other condiments here and say, oh, put some M&Ms uh, and some coconut on that. And every time they point their finger like that, it was 75 cents in our bank account. So having that, again, visual nature, not only uh, gives the theater of ice cream process to your customer, but it's also very good financially for you. So that's the kind of way that we ended up, a very, very different atmosphere to what we took over. Uh, and again, it's a combination of our end product our combination of our engagement, the way our customer service officers looked, the way they engaged their customers, and the environment in which they served their customers. So there you have it folks, three essential E's in order to help develop your concept and grow your own ice cream business. End product, engagement, environment. Very, very important. Now now's probably a good time to introduce the mascot of Scoop School. It's young Gilbert here. Now, Gilbert, you'll have seen in some of those slides previously, is very treasured amongst the uh, Mr. C's community as well as scoopschool.com. And you'll see Gilbert pop up from time to time in videos. And let Gilbert be a reminder to you that you can take the principles and elements that you see in some of these very successful ice cream shops and tweak and apply them to your particular business. So from Gilbert and myself, Steve Christensen, the ice cream bloke, we bid you adieu and look forward to you participating in some of the other scoopschool.com videos. Keep on scooping folks, we'll see you next time.